Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video. Okay, so in today's video, we are gonna be taking a look at the moods, safety and well-being of those of you who have moon located within your 10th house within your natal birth chart, but also for those of you who have cancer ruling your 10th house within your birth chart as well, or if you have a cancer midheaven. But before we do get started, make sure that you give this video a like if you like it, also make sure to subscribe if you have not already and to click that little bell icon in order to keep yourself updated with further content from myself and one more quick thing to mention if you would like to know more information all about your moon sign, your moon house along with your cancer house and your fourth house within your birth chart then I have created a cancer season slash archetype ebook. So what I am going to do is I'm going to provide a link to that ebook in the description box below so that you can pick up your copy today if you would like. Okay, so with all those introductions out of the way, Moon in the 10th house and Cancer ruling the 10th house slash Cancer Midheaven individuals, let's do this. Okay, so if you have Moon in the 10th house or Cancer ruling the 10th house or Cancer midheaven, then what this suggests is that your moods and your emotions and your sensitivities, they get very wrapped up within your accomplishments and your achievements. And so to be recognized or respected for what you accomplish, might internally impact you a great deal. This could be a boss or a manager, for example, telling you that your performance is brilliant or that you did a really, really great job on that piece of work that you spent ages on building, structuring and perfecting. Or this could be a parental figure uh, taking a look at your report card as another example and then them rewarding you for doing so well. Basically, when you're riding that wave of emotional fulfillment, emotional satisfaction, where you're feeling good for the work that you put in, life, life might feel blissful, comforting, secure. On the other hand though, it's these same moods that can be impacted just as much when you don't feel recognized or when you're not being respected for what you have accomplished. And if or when this happens, you might feel quite down in the dumps. You might also sulk whilst fearing that you won't ride that higher wave again. Or you might start feeling kind of insecure, a bit irrational, emotionally unstable. See, it's you, Moon in the 10th house, Cancer ruling the 10th house individuals that can have the tendency of clinging, clinging onto your accomplishments and your achievements. And so you might emotionally attach yourself to your reputation or to your public image and to the recognition really that you receive from others. But it's this emotional attachment that might result in you either flying high or sinking low, where you're either feeling good about yourself or where you're feeling completely crap about yourself. You may even possibly become needy or smothering or overbearing in an attempt to make people recognize you or you might even desperately look to other people for reassurance a lot, where you're just constantly wanting other people to reassure you of your successes. Or you might unconsciously give your power away to others where you end up really relying on other people to control your career path. Further implying here that it's these same emotions that can become tangled up in other people's expectations of you. Maybe growing up, your mother or certain family members, they influenced you a great deal or they shaped your career path. Perhaps you've always wanted to have your mother or your family just recognize you in some way or 
perhaps you've unconsciously pushed for a particular role or title that says I am responsible and I am ambitious in order to ensure that your mother or your family acknowledges you as a successful individual. And again, it could even very well be here that for some of you, you really have looked up to your mother or to uh, your family in general. It could even be a situation where you looked up to your mother's work ethic. Maybe she was a business orientated individual. And so you really did and still do admire this about your mother. And so she really influenced you in this way. Or for others of you, maybe you just recognize the family as a whole, or maybe there was some sort of family business that went on that you then wanted to take on as well. Though still another possibility here could be that it was due to your mother's nurturing qualities and her support and her care or lack thereof that you then decided, okay, this is what I want to aspire to be later on in my life. Maybe for some of you, you wish to follow in her footsteps or for others of you, you, you've learned or you wanted to learn from her mistakes that she made in your eyes. And so you set off on this mission that reflects these lessons learned. Though to be fair, it could even be just women as a whole have influenced your life path. So kind of just focusing here on your emotions, becoming tangled up in others in general. Maybe you're someone who just, you really want to emotionally care for the public. You want to emotionally support the public. You want to give your unconditional support. And therefore you might showcase a lot of empathy, a lot of remorse and a lot of kindness towards the public even if they can really piss you off sometimes. <laughs> so this could be you seeking after a public position that involves caregiving through the likes of catering, hospitality, nursing, housekeeping, real estate, veterinary, tutoring, or supporting those who need extra care or extra support like the elderly or the physically impaired or even animals that have been abandoned. And this same caregiving attitude might even be applied to the outdoors where you work in forests or you work in woodlands or where you work along beaches or by lakes and rivers, basically just attending to the environment and just caring for it. Naturally, however, it's good to consider whichever sign the moon is in, if it is that you have moon within your 10th house, because this sign can give you more of an insight into the type of career that you may choose to pursue. And I also think that it can provide more of an indication into the fluctuation of your moods or your emotions in association with your work ethic and your career as well. But regardless of the position itself, you're probably someone who deeply cares about the role you play amongst the public and you're going to give that support moon in the 10th house cancer rule in the 10th house individuals you might also become known as the person to go to if anybody just wants a shoulder to cry on or if others need just somebody to talk to somebody to really listen to them Though on the other hand, perhaps these supportive and nurturing qualities were molded or shaped by your upbringing as previously mentioned, such as you being the family caretaker or you moving out of your family home and having no other choice than to support yourself. And I also think that there's a possibility of your need for emotional feedback and recognition being linked to the matters of the home here as well such as you lacking emotional support or emotional approval growing up. So for example, perhaps there was a bit of an emotional distance from your mother, such as her just always working or having a lot of responsibilities, though this could be more in relation with harder aspects to the moon within the birth chart where possibly she was even quite cruel, very cold, then again, maybe your parental figure's way of just showing you emotional support or comfort and security was telling you to just get out there and achieve the things that you need to achieve in order to obtain a secure and stable life. So in this respect, perhaps the type of position or title 
that you do end up obtaining, it needs to feel safe and secure. It needs to feel like a position where you belong. It needs to feel like a role that is emotionally supportive where you feel comforted and you feel protected. Therefore, you might spend some time throughout your life seeking that position that feels right for you. This position where you sort of sit back and you just go, here I feel at home, here I belong. So following on from this point, perhaps actually raising a family of your own one day is what you strive for. Or maybe just with time, just with time, you, you actually gradually become a family orientated person in general, whether that be you having a family of your own or you attending to the needs of your current family. Could very well be suggested that your family will provide you with many lessons as well throughout your life. Lessons that can be tough and hard to swallow. Lessons that might feel very uncomfortable or emotionally exhausting, but yet by addressing them head on, you're made stronger and much more emotionally secure within yourself in the long run. Or quite possibly, there's just a lot of built up karma that exists within your family. And so you may feel that it's your purpose, it's your responsibility to break the cycle or to ignite something new. And seeing as the moon can be associated with our soul's mission, it could be suggested that it's your soul's purpose to go through these trials and errors when it comes to not just your family unit, but also when it comes to where you find your sense of belonging on this earth. And if this is the case, well, this whole journey may be a deeply spiritual process for you. Now that I mentioned the trial and error, perhaps it's you, Moon in the 10th house, Cancer ruling in the 10th house, individuals that is gradually and steadily learning how to build on your emotional security and well-being. Maybe certain criticisms that bosses or managers once said to you, they, they really did get to you emotionally, they got you emotionally riled up, but maybe it's these same criticisms that eventually they start to subside or they don't have as much power over you or maybe you don't feel as cranky as you once felt in terms of certain criticisms you would receive from members of authority or maybe you, you kind of grow by not feeling as personally attacked or hurt by other people's opinions of you in general, suggesting that over time you may really grow emotionally and really mature emotionally. But at the same time, of course, remember that your emotions can be your par when it comes to your public and professional life because like I said, you can emotionally support others within the professional sphere. And even if it is that you decide, you know what, you feel that your purpose is to raise your own family, then yes, you can use these things to support your own family too. So you can reassure bosses and loved ones, or you can show sensitivity towards the public's needs, or you can use your protective instincts or mother-like qualities to make sure others are safe and well looked after, or you can defend your managers or bosses due to the strong and solid rapport that you build with them. Heck, you can even be known as the person who focuses on coming up with practical long-term solutions for female issues or emotional issues or feminine issues or problems. Though essentially, I think that you can become known as the person who members of the public or members of authority, they can depend on you. They can rely on you. You might have days where your moods can spiral out of control or days where you feel like pulling your hair out because of how much others are irritating you. But if you know deep down in your soul that you belong within a particular position or role, you'll, you're most likely um, you're most likely going to protect that position with everything that you've got. Oh yeah, there is no underestimating your part, moon in the 10th house, cancer ruling the 10th house individuals, not to mention you can be tough as nails. So if anybody ever attacks your title or your role when you know how long and hard you've worked for it, 
well, I wouldn't like to be there to see your reaction. Sure, you might fluctuate where you can appear quite immature or irrational, but you also need to feel safe and secure, suggesting that yes, okay, you're gonna get defensive if others threaten your professional safety and security. So another thing I wanna mention here is how your moods can impact how you associate with the, the public or how you relate with the public. Sort of like I was implying earlier, but sometimes you might feel excited and in the mood to really show up and cater to the needs of the public, but other times you might just want to hide away or seek refuge away from the public where you just, you're not, you're not feeling it. So in this way, yes, there may be this fluctuation with you, not to mention um, it's the same mood phases or fluctuations that might influence your career decisions as well, or they might impact how you recognize your own dedication and your hard work and your ambition. So this could be you thinking that you're not the most dedicated or ambitious person because you're having a bit off and off day, for example. Or this could be you reacting to a situation at work where you just want to leave. You just want to throw it all away. And if this is the case, I think it might be of a great benefit to you to establish some healthy boundaries between you and the public. Along with you learning how to just let go of these emotional attachments that I previously mentioned, where you can just know how to detach from these really emotional tides in order for you just to think a lot more rationally and a lot more logically about things. And I also think that it might be a good idea for you to address your private life and your emotional world overall. Because it's one thing to connect with the public emotionally where your emotions are out there in the public domain or where you're supporting other people out in the public but it's another thing to address your own emotions, right? Your own emotional needs, your own emotional well-being, and supporting yourself. And again, maybe you experience emotional satisfaction or fulfillment through your professional life itself. Perhaps you even look to certain members of authority and you see them as your family, as the people who you can emotionally connect with. Naturally, however, keep in mind here, please, the potential implications that can come with this as well. I mean, at the end of the day, in a world of uh, capitalism, business is business, and sometimes it isn't pretty, if we're gonna be realistic about it. Though, ultimately, Moon in the 10th house, Cancer ruling the 10th house individuals, it is you who needs to feel like you're in a career or a profession where you belong and where you are recognized and respected for the warm, caring, protective, nurturing, supportive, and instinctive qualities that you bring to the table. Okay then, Cosmic Warriors, so that concludes my video on the mood, safety, and emotional well-being of those of you who have moon within your 10th house, but also for those of you who have the sign of Cancer ruling your 10th house, or a Cancer midheaven within your natal birth chart. Now, if you happen to have any of these placements, then let us know what you thought of the video in the comment section down below. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And of course, if you would like to see more videos from myself and you have not yet subscribed, then make sure that you click that subscribe button and make sure that you give this video a like, remember, as well. And I will be back with another video very, very soon. Bye!